Hi, it's Katrina. From flying creatures the size of giraffes to doors as heavy as an elephant, here is the actual size of 12 different things put into perspective. Number 12. Quetzalcoatlus Northropi. You may have never heard of Quetzalcoatlus Northropi, the largest flying animal that ever existed. This flying reptile known as a pterosaur was named after the Mesoamerican god Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent that created the cosmos and was a manifestation of the wind, one of the most powerful forces in nature. Seeing a connection here? This giant flying beast came from a family called the Asdarkids. Q. Northropi lived in what is now North America during the Cretaceous period and toward the end of the dinosaur age, between 144 and 66 million years ago. Wired Magazine describes this creature as a reptilian stork that delivered death instead of babies. That sounds pretty terrifying. It was an excellent flyer, which is pretty shocking considering the ancient reptile stood as tall as a modern-day giraffe at around 16.4 feet and weighed roughly 550 pounds. Equipped with a huge beak, long neck, a small but dense and muscular torso, and wings proportionate to its body, Quetzalcoatlus took to the skies with a strong, four-footed leap and a pole vault-type motion. Once airborne, it could remain in flight for up to 9,942 miles. Imagine a ginormous flying giraffe! If that doesn't remind you of a dragon, I don't know what will. It had a 35-foot wingspan which is about the length of a standard telephone pole. There have been tons of new discoveries regarding pterosaurs, showing what the world would have been like with these flying beasts going around picking up baby dinosaurs. Number 11. The Star Spangled Banner if you've ever hung a flag on a flagpole, you probably already know that they're bigger than they seem from ground level. But the flag that inspired Francis Scott Key to write the national anthem of the United States is equally deceptive from afar and is even larger than most flags that are flown today. A flag maker named Mary Pickgerald created the original Star Spangled Banner, measuring 30 by 42 feet in Baltimore, Maryland in July to August 1813. Just as a reference, 30 feet is about four times as tall as Shaq. The flag had an area of 1,260 square feet, which is about the size of a six-car garage. The flag has gone through some changes, though. It currently measures 30 by 34 feet because pieces of it were cut off and given away as souvenirs during the late 1800s. Cutting snippets of historical relics was a popular practice at the time, and over 200 square feet of the flag were given away to veterans, government officials, and other important citizens. What's left of the Star Spangled Banner is on display at the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History in Washington, D.C. The flag has 15 stripes altogether, and there were 15 stars, but one was cut out and given away. Number 10. The Solar System the world sometimes feels like a huge place. After all, most people only see a small portion of it in their whole lifetime. But our solar system is even bigger, and it's hard to fully understand or appreciate its size as a two-dimensional model. To put things into perspective, NASA described the solar system as if it were the size of a football field with its contents scaled down accordingly. A football field in the U.S. is 100 yards long between the goal lines with an extra 10 yards past the goal lines to the end lines for a total length of 120 yards. For all of you soccer fans out there, a FIFA-approved soccer field is also 110 to 120 yards, so basically the same. Anywho, according to this model, the sun would be just 0.67 inches in diameter, or about the width of a U.S. dime. Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars would each be the size of a grain of sand, with a barely noticeable difference in size. A grain of sand is about 1.25 millimeters, or 0.05 inches. Pluto would be about 79 yards out from the sun, and the Voyager 1 probe would be way out in the stadium parking lot. Think about that for a second. In 2015, filmmakers Wiley Overstreet and Alex Gorosh created a seven-minute video called To Scale the Solar System, which presents a size-accurate model of the solar system in Nevada's Black Rock Desert. If you put the orbits to scale on a piece of paper, the planets become microscopic, and you won't be able to see them, Overstreet says in the video. The only way to see a scale model of our solar system is to build one. Mercury sits 224 feet away from the five-foot sun in the center, while Venus sits 447 feet from the sun, and Earth and Mars are located at 579 feet and 881 feet, respectively. 
At three and a half miles from the sun, Neptune represents the solar system's outer limit. Pretty cool, huh? Did you ever have to make a model of the solar system in school? Let me know in the comments below. I know I did. Number nine, anglerfish. The anglerfish is a deep sea fish with an enormous mouthful of razor sharp translucent teeth. There are over 200 species of anglerfish, with their most distinctive feature being the piece of flesh that protrudes above their mouths like a fishing pole. It lights up in the deep dark water, attracting little unsuspecting fishies to come and investigate. Only females have this feature. While most anglerfish are less than a foot long, some can reach up to 3.3 feet long. Way bigger than I'm sure most of us thought. I was picturing more like the size of a basketball. Their mouths are so big, the rest of the fish's body is all crammed together. It's like swimming jaws. While females feed on whatever food is available, males function solely to deliver sperm. At any given time, up to six males are attached to a female like a parasite. Using its intimidating set of teeth, a young male will latch onto his chosen female and then over time will begin to become physically fused to her. The rest of his body starts to disappear until it becomes connected to the female's skin and bloodstream, becoming nothing more than a pair of testes. That's depressing. Number 8. Countries Thanks to the world's most widely recognized map, known as the Mercator Projection, most people have misconceptions about the actual sizes of countries and land masses. Cartographer Gerardus Mercator created the map in 1569 as a tool for nautical navigation. In this map, Europe, North America, and Greenland appear larger than they actually are. And while Canada and Russia occupy a mere 5% of the Earth's surface in real life, they take up approximately a quarter of it according to Mercator's map. Because of this, Africa looks much smaller in comparison to other continents than it actually is, and Japan is also bigger than it seems. Algeria is bigger than Alaska, and Madagascar would cover most of the U.S. East Coast. Mercator isn't solely to blame for these misconceptions because no two-dimensional map can accurately depict a spherical object. Even if some other version of the world on paper became the standard, most of us would still have a misunderstanding of different countries' proportions. A few years ago, Google Maps began depicting the planet as a globe. With hundreds of millions of users, this could pave the way for reshaping people's understanding of the sizes of continents and countries. Number 7. The Titanic when the Titanic set sail in 1912, it was the largest luxury ship ever built. Actually, it was the largest structure ever built to float on water. The ship was 882 feet long, 92 feet wide, and 175 feet high, and had 10 decks. Before the Titanic was constructed, the shipyard in Belfast had to be modified to accommodate the Titanic and its two sister ships. Also, the pier in New York had to be modified to receive them. The world marveled at the Titanic's size and the hype has effectively continued into modern times, perhaps giving people a misconstrued view of just how big it was. Take for example the current world record holder for the largest cruise ship. At 1,188 feet long, almost the equivalent of four football fields, 215 feet wide and 229 feet high, the Symphony of the Seas completely dwarfs the Titanic. It has 18 decks and has a total capacity of 8,880, compared to the Titanic's ability to carry 2,435 passengers and 892 crew members. Regardless, it is true that it remained one of the biggest ships for almost 100 years before the Oasis of the Seas. Another large ship was launched in 2010. As another comparison, the largest of Christopher Columbus's ships, called Santa Maria, measured only about 70 feet long with a crew of 40 men. Number 6. The Wombat Marsupials in general tend to grow much bigger than most people realize, but the actual size of one in particular, the Wombat, is especially surprising. Wombats may look cute, cuddly, and small, but you may as well cross off that last trait because they can grow up to 90 pounds, roughly the size of a 13-year-old human or a medium-sized dog. According to the San Diego Zoo, the common wombat typically weighs between 55 and 88 pounds, while the hairy-nosed wombat, 42 to 71 pounds. On average, these animals grow up to 3.3 feet. Seeing one of these full-grown creatures in a human's arms helps to put their size into perspective, but you can probably agree that they're much larger than you probably thought. There is also a squirrel that gets to this length, too. Have you heard of the Malabar giant squirrel? Native to India, not only is it about one meter long, but it also has extremely unique coloring. Number 5. Great Pyramid of Giza 
The pyramids of Giza in northern Egypt are the last surviving wonder of the ancient world, and it's no secret that they're massive. The biggest among the three iconic structures, known as the Great Pyramid, stands at 456 feet tall, with an original height of 481 feet. Each side of its base measures roughly 776 feet. On their own, these dimensions may not seem any more impressive than you expected. Maybe you've even visited the pyramids yourself and witnessed their grandeur firsthand. But for those of us who have only ever seen it in photographs, it's hard to envision how truly massive they are. Until perhaps you actually see a picture of a tourist standing directly in front of one of the colossal structures. The 5.75 million ton Great Pyramid was constructed using approximately 2.3 million stone blocks each weighing between two and a half tons, or about as much as 25 refrigerators, and 30 tons. You can calculate how many refrigerators that is. On average, the stones used at the base of the pyramid measured five feet long by five feet high and six feet deep. The average woman at five feet four inches tall would barely stand taller than one of those blocks. Number four, traffic light. From down below, traffic lights look small enough for one person to carry comfortably. Think again. When these things come down, usually during a storm or a hurricane, people are shocked to see how big they actually are. Most of them are over four feet tall. Traffic signals come in two sizes depending on the lens diameter, and lenses typically measure either eight or 12 inches. The smaller signals are roughly 30 inches tall and nine and a half inches wide. Each traffic light can weigh between 15 to 50 pounds depending on the material. People so commonly underestimate the size of traffic lights, there was even a study done on this phenomenon. The research, published in the October 2003 edition of the Journal of Vision, exposed test subjects to traffic lights from various distances, then asked them to rate the light size based on what they'd seen. The majority guess wrong. I'll save you the trouble of reading the study. In conclusion, the study says that observers rely on assumed size when estimating the size of a distant traffic light. This kind of applies to everything. Expectations do not always equal reality. Number three, doors to the U.S. National Archives. The Constitution Avenue entrance to the National Archives in Washington, D.C. is marked by two bronze doors of monumental proportions. The doors are 37 feet, 7 inches tall, 10 feet wide, 11 inches thick, and each weighs six and a half tons. That's like trying to move an African elephant. Architect John Russell Pope, who designed the building, wanted to remind visitors of its importance, according to Jesse Kratz, historian of the National Archives. The doors were first opened on October 18, 1935. Before passing through them, visitors had to climb 39 steps. Not too bad. So how did the guards open such massive doors? they were motorized, requiring no more than the turn of a key. The bronze doors were closed in 2001 during renovations after over 65 years of being used, and they remain shut to this day except for special occasions. Visitors to the National Archives now enter the building from the sidewalk level below the rotunda. Number two, giant African land snail. Anyone who is squeamish about slimy creatures will want to avoid the giant African land snail, which grows nearly eight inches long and weighs about the same as a small puppy. They are basically snails the size of your face. While it may not be as large as it looks in certain photographs, due to something called forced perspective, it's much bigger than your average snail, hence its name. Some people even think it's bizarrely cute. I don't, sorry. But if you are one of those people, don't get any ideas about keeping this conspicuous creature as a pet, especially if you live in the US, where keeping a giant African land snail is illegal in many states. The US Department of Agriculture considers the giant African land snail to be one of the most invasive species, and it's also considered one of the world's 100 most harmful invasive species. It eats over 500 different plant species and has the capacity to cause extensive damage to crops and agriculture. The snail has been a problem in Hawaii and Florida, where it arrived in 1936 and 1966, respectively. The state of Florida spent a decade and millions trying to get rid of them, only for the species to reappear in 2011. This is because people had them as pets and then released their hungry snails into the wild. Efforts to keep it under control are ongoing, but this is a difficult endeavor, as the giant African land snail is a resilient species. They are hermaphrodites and efficient breeders, laying up to 1,200 viable eggs annually. These creatures are also known to carry a parasite in its slime that can cause meningitis in humans. Yet another reason to avoid keeping one as a pet. Number 1. 
The general Sherman tree. The world's largest living tree by volume is a giant sequoia called the general Sherman tree located in the giant forest of Sequoia National Park in Tulare County, California. At 275 feet tall, it's almost the same height as the Statue of Liberty and growing. At over 36 feet in diameter at the base, it's something you need to see firsthand to appreciate the true enormity of. General Sherman is an estimated 2,200 years old, but nobody knows the tree's age for sure. Because sequoia trees maintain their width high up into the sky, the General Sherman tree is 17 and a half feet in diameter, 60 feet from the bottom of the trunk. To give you an even better idea of how big the tree is, just one of its branches is nearly 7 feet in diameter, which is larger than most trees east of the Mississippi River. But you're unlikely to truly take notice of how large these branches are, because the first branch is 130 feet high. The tree grows enough wood each year to make a 60-foot tall tree. General Sherman lost a branch during a storm in 2006, giving people the rare opportunity to see one up close. Luckily, nobody was harmed, but the gargantuan branch took out a fence and smashed a crater into the pavement. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe if you haven't already. We'd love to have you! See you next time! Bye!